What's up guys? Today on Robbie's Reviews, I am reviewing the 2018 Lexus LC500. I just want to thank my friend Dennis, who's very kindly allowed me to take his car out on the road to drive it, get a feel for what it's like, and uh, to check out all its cool features and uh, show you guys what it's all about. So let's go check it out. All right guys, here she is, the 2018 Lexus LC500. This is finished in a nice metallic black, black on black everywhere, the full glass roof, Actually, Dennis has put on 21-inch Vossen forged wheels. Looks very good with the gloss black Lexus calipers with the uh, silver lettering there to match the center cap. Very, very large brakes. I think they're 15.7-inch front rotors, I believe. Ventilated discs. And right away, the LC500 just looks like something that is not street legal. It's a concept car that Lexus designed and uh, never released, but in fact, they did release it, and this is a production model. And it's been out for a couple years now, and there's not that many of them on the roads. It's not a cheap car. Um, the majority of them are around, I think, 100 grand or so. Options-wise, they come with pretty much everything standard. There are two variants. There's a hybrid model, which this one is not. This is the regular model, what, or the uh, one with the five-liter naturally aspirated V8 that is shared with the Lexus ISF and the GSF, as well as the RCF. But like I was saying, it's just one of those cars that really didn't change much from its concept design. And um, Lexus just did a fantastic job. So up front you have uh, Lexus's corporate face, which is the classic spindle grille, finished in the black chrome. You have the Lexus logo here, which I believe houses all the radar sensors for the adaptive cruise control and what have you. And probably one of my favorite design elements on the car that I'm going to show you guys in a little bit are the headlights. So you have the turn signal down here, it's kind of an arrowhead design that snakes under here and goes all the way up and somehow continues into the headlight. Whoever thought of that design is a genius and I love what they did with it. I don't want to know what it costs to replace a headlight, but nonetheless it looks great. And this has the three projector LED headlights, they're active. And here you have the turn signal down below, it comes down here, it kind of follows the line. And you have this kind of gray housing that contrasts nicely with the metallic black paintwork. It's a very, very good looking front end. It's a very long hood. It's not the biggest engine in the world, 5 liter naturally aspirated V8, so no turbos, nothing like that. The engine's somewhere around here, really kind of hidden back there for better weight distribution. And uh, we'll open up the hood in a second and show you guys. But uh, moving down the side, you have very, very nicely sculpted mirrors. You have the lines that go through it. You have the indicator in the side here. You have the blind spot sensor there. And actually I love this intake, this vent here that com comes out and actually is functional feeds out through here. Gotta love that metallic paintwork in the sun. So here you have the floating roof design which is very very popular now especially with Lexus models. And you've got a full glass roof. There is a sunshade inside. You can't actually open it. It's a fixed glass roof but nice to look at. And coming around the back you have a very sculpted trunk lid with looks like a ducktail design here. And uh, when I was talking about lights earlier, it's not just the headlights that are cool, it is the taillights that are absolutely amazing. We'll turn them on in a little bit and show you guys. But you've got this like kind of chrome etched design here. And I don't know if you guys can see it right now, but there's a mirror in there that reflects this LED design here. And it looks like a never ending taillight inside. And you've got the turn signal that continues down here. Of course you've got parking sensors, all the uh, safety and technology features. Backup camera here. And uh, this car normally comes with kind of a, well it does sound very good stock, it usually comes with the basic like plastic chrome surround for the exhaust tips. It is a quad exhaust uh, when it's stock, however Dennis has added a custom quad exhaust system, it sounds amazing and we're going to get some sound clips in a little bit for you guys. Alright now we're going to open up the hood and show you guys that 5 liter V8. But first you probably notice that the door handles are flush against the door. So with the key fob in your pocket, you just touch the little dimple here. Handle pops out with the Lexus logo, pull on it. And you're greeted by a lot of leather and Alcantara, just great materials. And one thing I want to show you guys first, that people will probably never notice, all the uh, rivets here, the hardware on the door, there's the Lexus logo that is engraved three times, and you have this nice forged carbon finish here on the door. It's very, very cool. Got the hood pull here.
All right, so here we have that five liter naturally aspirated V8. And while it's not much to look at, you actually do get to see a lot more compared to other Lexus models. For one, you have this giant five liter V8 here. You can see just underneath the nice carbon fiber design engine cover, the Lexus logo. Got the dual intakes there, the air intakes, the uh, strut bars here, for the chassis stiffening. And uh, while well, most of the engine is actually sitting on or behind the front axle, it doesn't quite make it a front mid engine V8 like some AMGs and BMWs. However, it's not like an Audi where the whole engine is basically sitting over the front axle. So the weight distribution is great in that sense. So this engine actually produces 471 horsepower and 398 foot-pounds of torque. And it's made it to a 10-speed automatic transmission that is actually a delight. And the shifts are actually very snappy. The upshifts and downshifts are very quick. Um, the transmission never seems to get confused about what gear it's in. It always knows what to do next. And it's just a great transmission. And uh, you probably notice these like explosive cap looking things. I've never really seen that on a car. But I found out that uh, in the event that you hit a pedestrian, the hood will actually explode up to help them get over the car to reduce damage to themselves. Not sure what that does to the hood or when these explode, the extent of the damage they cause, but I guess safety first for pedestrians, so that's interesting. Wouldn't want to hit those by accident. Now we're going to close it up. All right, so let's step inside real quick. So turn on the hazard lights and the headlights and taillights. The ignition on. Probably noticed that the uh, display slid to the right, which is a very cool feature was introduced in the Lexus LFA. All right, so we got the headlight controls on the stock here. Just gonna turn them on, as well as the hazard lights. Got a student driver doing a great job. All right, so now let's get a look at those LED headlights. So as you can see, the turn signals are very, very bright. There's kind of like that vertical design. And uh, in conjunction with the spindle grille, this, uh, I don't know if you can see, the front of the car is like very, very curved. It kind of folds in under itself. So it's not like a flat grille. It's a very, very unique design. And for the headlights, you have these three crystal LED projectors, which are not only very nice to look at, they're very functional. They put out a lot of light. And you have that same design down here in the headlight kind of repeating from the spindle grill and that same arrowhead design for the daytime running light or DRL continues here it's like a very it's a solid white light looks very nice and moving around the side so you have those indicators in the mirrors I was talking about earlier and now for probably one of my favorite features about the car again you have the uh, vertical turn signals that are repeating in the back but for the running light, you have this mirror effect. So it looks like it continues on forever inside there, which is very, very cool. I'll show you on this side. I don't know if you guys can see that so well in the sun, but it just looks like it never ends. It's a very, very cool feature. Let's take a step inside. Once again, hit the little dimple here on the door. Handle pops out. So now we're going to start it up. And one thing you guys are probably familiar with if you've seen other Lexuses or started up a Lexus before, um, you get like a little movie when you start the car up. And uh, this one has not one, not two, but three little movies when you start it up. One in the infotainment display here, another one in the gauge cluster, and a third one up in the heads up display, which you'll see in a second. Let's close it up. Now let's see if we can get all three movies at the same time. I don't know if you guys saw the heads up display. I don't think it's reconfigurable, but it's a very high quality. You can see the uh, the RPM gauge there, rev counter, the speed, navigation. I'm sure you can probably change the contents of it. But so here we are in the interior of the 2018 Lexus LC500. And I'm not sure if you guys can hear that exhaust note in the background, but the car sounds lovely and we're going to get some nice driving footage later. 
does not sound like any Lexus I've ever driven. And I know that there is the Lexus LFA, which is the V10 supercar. It sounds incredible, like, you know, Formula One technology and all that. But um, this is something completely different. It is a luxury Grand Tour that uh, Lexus decided they were going to make. And they were going to enter the Grand Tour market, which is not a very big segment. And there's not much competition. And there's, it's not really that popular. You have the likes of the M6 and the 6 Series, which has been uh, discontinued. The S-Class Coupe, which is going to be gone after this year. And uh, the Mercedes SL and stuff like that. However, Lexus has really done a good job with this car. And uh, the interior of Dennis's LC500 here is the black full leather with the black Alcantara. And you have all the contrast stitching here. The white stitching on the dashboard. The entire dashboard is leather and Alcantara. You have the Alcantara here with the white contrast stitching. This is that student driver again. And uh, of course they had to put an analog clock. It's still a luxury car. It's kind of an old timey thing, but hopefully we're starting to get away from that. You have this very interesting design here that's kind of behind a glass wall. So it starts with the uh, clock here and it kind of continues down here with the spindle grill effect. And uh, something pretty odd is the passenger has three air vents. Two of them look like they're facing the ceiling. One of them is kind of in the corner here pointing down. But nonetheless, the passenger is going to get a lot of air. Got another vent here, another one here. You have this silver kind of uh, brushed aluminum uh, stripe that's continuing all the way across the car. Goes into this nice kind of ridged effect in the door panels. And the passenger actually has two grab handles if the driver wants to get a little crazy. So you have the one over there. You have the one here, it's curved, nice and ergonomic. It has the uh, leather on the outside and it's lined with the uh, brushed aluminum on the inside so you don't get the leather dirty. So you have that same white contrast stitching coming across. You have the metal buttons for the AC, the climate control, which actually feels very, very good. You have the start stop button here, which is metal. Going up and around, everything's covered in leather. I mean, everything. More contrast stitching, heads up display controls, trunk. Trip odometer. Let's see what else you got. Memory seats. Even the buttons down here feel great. And one thing I want to point out is the door handle, which would seem like it might be flimsy at first because it's kind of disconnected from here and it's kind of going all the way out here. But when you pull on it, that is not the case. It feels very, very solid. It has no problem opening this very, very heavy door. And it's just a great design. Nice and aluminum. Then you have the steering wheel, which is fully leather wrapped. You have the perforated leather here, the full leather up top and the bottom. You have a three spoke design, stitched leather horn cover. You have the buttons here for your music, media. You have your cruise control, link keep assist, what have you. Pedals down there look pretty nice. You have the kind of brushed aluminum with the rubber or inserts there for your feet so they don't slide around. Coming around to the middle, you have the shifter for the 10 speed automatic transmission. It's an electronic shifter. It's a nice little uh, leather cover on it here with the same black chrome design. You have the park button here. And you have your little legend here for uh, reverse neutral drive and manual. You have your hold button. for the uh, It'll hold the brake while you're at a stoplight. And down here you've got Lexus's infamous remote touch interface, which is kind of the trackpad, mouse pad design here. And uh, it's one of the most controversial infotainment systems on the market. In uh, previous years, a lot of people have complained about them, like in the RX models and the GS and all that. And however, um, having spent some time with the LC and this new newest version of the remote touch interface, Lexus has done an amazing job with it this time around. The little touchpad here it gives you haptic feedback. You can even go to the menu. So here we go, menu. It gives you perfect haptic touch feedback, as well as audio feedback. It's very, very responsive. There's no lag at all. So just go to apps. The infotainment screen is very far away and it's kind of behind a glass cover here. So it's never going to be touchscreen. I don't know if Lexus is going to plan on, plans on doing touchscreen. However, if the remote touch interface is this good now, that's, that's okay with me. And one other thing. So you have the seek track knob here and the tune knob. And I don't think I've ever seen a seat track knob that's that nice. It's got this like knurled effect, this nice feedback. And the power and volume knob is so perfectly weighted and heavy, it just feels awesome. And you press it there for the power. And uh, so you've got a very, very small cup holder here. 
not really much can go in there. Maybe a water bottle, but it might end up blocking the climate control. So kind of seems like an afterthought. So we're going to close that for now. It's maybe good enough to fit your phone. It's nicely leather covered. Um, and another thing I like is uh, there's a different kind of leather material here for, your, for you to rest your hand on when you're using the uh, trackpad. So it doesn't get, um, doesn't deteriorate or become, doesn't get worn too much. And uh, if we hit here for the center console, you have another cup holder. It's not exactly round. It's probably good for a water bottle, a cup of coffee, something like that. You have a place for your phone here. And to open the center console, you have this little pull lever here. It only opens in the direction of the driver. And you've got things like a cigarette lighter outlet, USB, auxiliary port. And the only way, unfortunately, you can open the center console is um, if you open it and slide it back here. So it's a two-step process to open the center console, but that's a minor gripe. It's really not a, it's not a deal breaker at all when it comes to buying this car. Close it, you just hit that, it slides forward. And as you can see, the seats are very, very heavily bolstered, but they are extremely comfortable. They're lined with Alcantara and leather on the outside. They're ventilated and heated. And the back seat is really not that big. It's comparable to a 911 um, C Mercedes C-Class, you know, really good for uh, children, animals, groceries, stuff like that. But you do have the amazing Mark Levinson sound system, which is uh, one of the greatest sound systems on the market, in my opinion. Here you have the Alcantara up here that lines the opening for the heads-up display. And moving around to the sides, you have your modes here. You have traction control, snow, Get, not getting much snow in Florida, but other side you have your driving modes. So you have normal, custom, comfort, eco, sport, and sport plus. And if we go here, go to the gauge cluster. So this is eco, you have comfort, the design changes, then you have sport, and then sport plus. And sport plus, the design of the tachometer dramatically changes. It gets nice and big so you can see it easily. And uh, one of the party tricks on this car is instead of the fixed uh, reconfigurable digital gauge cluster, you have a physical element in there that was introduced on the Lexus LFA. If you actually hit this little button here, the whole display slides to give you kind of a central view. And if you press it again, it makes a cool noise and actually slides again to the right so you can see all your G-force gear position, tire pressure, trip info, stuff like that. We'll leave it on G-Force. Actually, we'll put it back to the middle for now. It's pretty cool. And you can see all your gauges, temperature, fuel gauge, uh, mileage, stuff like that. And uh, all in all, it's a very, very nicely equipped interior. All the luxury amenities you can want and expect from a luxury car like this. It's more of a grand tour, like I was saying, so it's meant to comfortably drive across country. Um, and really never want for power, plenty of power, it's 470 plus horsepower, plenty of torque, that 10 speed transmission is great to live with. There's really no surface in this car you touch that feels cheap, everything feels well put together and solid. Lexus and Toyota, let's be before honest, have always been good at making very reliable cars that can go a long time and this is a, this car is a 5 liter V8, I mean there's no turbos, no superchargers, nothing to mess up, it's just a good old reliable V8. And um, you actually do have the sunshade here. Just a fixed glass roof. Can't open it. It's just if you want some sun or to look out at night. And the headliner is this really, really nice, like micro, sw micro suede or microfiber uh, material. You have the Bluetooth microphone there. A little light here. Not the biggest sun visor in the world, but the windshield is actually pretty narrow and slim, so it fits pretty nicely. You actually have these nice wheel-mounted paddle shifters. They're aluminum. They feel good. There's a nice uh, cutout in the back for your fingers. It's got things like automatic high beams, auto wipers, pretty much everything you can want. As far as the infotainment, it's got a pretty decent backup camera. The guidance line's there. If you put in park, go to the menu here. Put the map. You can actually pinch to zoom. The pinch to zoom works just as well as on any phone. Go back to menu. Projection. 
it's, whole, it's pretty standard stuff as far as infotainment goes. You can really customize it to your taste if you don't want certain sounds to play or if you want certain sounds to play or if you want haptic feedback. You got vehicle settings here, park assist, drive mode, customization like an individual mode, valet mode, maintenance, stuff like that. Go back to the map. And of course you got the nice analog clock. Kind of antiquated but looks appropriate in this car. And one last thing I want to show you guys in the interior is uh, you know how most cars have the physical door locks where they move up and down? This car actually has the indi LED indicator here. So if you hit lock, it actually lights up green, unlock, turns off. That's actually really, really cool. Nice little touch. Lexus didn't have to do, but they did. Now we're gonna go get some startup and rev clips as well as some driving footage. stock. Uh, my friend Dennis has actually added a custom aftermarket exhaust to it. Open it real quick. Not sure how well you guys can hear me. It, uh, it sounds very, very good though. I don't think it makes a difference in sound, but it lets the transmission shift a little bit sooner. So right off the bat, I noticed that this is just like any other luxury Grand Tour that I've driven. The suspension is very supple, nice and soft, it's comfortable to drive. It's uh, nicely weighted, it's not too light, not too heavy, it actually adjusts a little bit. It's a variable ratio. Uh, visibility is great. I have a nice big windshield. The A pillars are actually pretty small. B pillars are small and C pillars really aren't that bad either. I've got blind spot monitoring. I got a heads up display. I have um, all the creature comforts and amenities in the world. And um, if I put it into Sport Plus, it does this. Lexus, the uh, safety assistant, is trying to stop me there. But um, yeah, it sounds like that. And uh, it is definitely amazing. Put it back down into comfort. Make sure I leave it at eco. So, I mean, aside from uh, being a very big car, it's over 4,000 pounds. It's rear wheel drive. It has a front mounted 5 liter naturally aspirated V8. I haven't really taken it on any twisty roads yet but it does feel very nice. The seats are actually very comfortable, heavily bolstered. I get the sense this would be a great daily driver and my friend Dennis actually does daily drive this car. And with that 10 speed transmission, right now I'm cruising in eighth gear at 1500 RPM. You can hear the exhaust rumbling away. It's not intrusive. There's no actual drone. You really hear it when you get on it, but that, then again, that's the uh, performance aspect of the exhaust and uh, it's definitely made to be heard. This definitely can hear this car from probably a mile away but it's a very very good noise that it makes that 5 liter naturally aspirated V8 that actually is shared in the Lexus RCF as well as the GSF and the ISF taking a roundabout here nothing too crazy but the car definitely handles itself nicely now we're cruising in 10th gear doing about 1200 rpms i mean the car uh doesn't get the best gas mileage in the world but then again if you drive it you know in eco mode and civil like a human being then uh you'll get okay gas mileage but then again that's not really the reason you buy this car 
you buy it for the luxury aspect, the comfort, the sound that it makes, and even stock. You know, this is not stock exhaust. The stock exhaust sounds very good, and the downshifts you get from the transmission are very snappy. I love the uh, full color heads up display that shows you the speed limit. Got the uh, the Alcantara inserts in the seats. They're very very comfortable. Keeps me nice in place. Then you have the leather trim on the outside. This this spot here to uh, rest my arm is very comfortable. And uh, really not much else to say. It's just a great all around Grand Tour. Great luxury car. Lexus really knocked it out of the park. I've been wanting to review this car since it came out in 2018. And uh, Dennis has been kind enough to lend me his car for the afternoon. And I've been enjoying it very much. And um, they were actually about a hundred thousand dollars or so new. I'm not sure what they're going for now. I don't see why a car like this wouldn't hold its value. It's a great, great value. And um, like I said, all the amenities and the creature comforts you get. Well, you do get it in a lot of other cars, just the way that it's presented here. Put it back up into eighth gear. I mean, just the way the car is presented, everything about it. The, I mean, the ride is very, very soft right now, nice and comfortable. Lexuses are always known for their soft rides. So that's not a surprise there. But the fact that this feels like I'm driving an old muscle car, not the fact that the suspension is stiff or rough, just the sound it's making, the seating position, the long hood, just everything about it. Just love this car. All right, guys. Well, that should do it for this review of the 2018 Lexus LC500. Once again, I just want to thank my friend Dennis, who's allowed me to take the car out and uh, see what it's like to drive and show you guys all its cool features. See you next time.